This is my entire featured length film, Permaculture Pigs. It's our first two year adventure with pigs from piglet to the plate, but also putting those pigs to work in the garden, in the forest, also demonstrating what if you don't have much space. We raised two pigs all the way to harvest in 120 square foot under a carport. You're gonna enjoy it. If you go away from this feeling like, oh, I wanna do this, I can. Well, guess what, you can. I've got now a, I've now released Permaculture Pigs, the course into Abundance Plus. So you wanna check that out at AbundancePlus.com or link down in the description. How does it make you feel to be getting pigs on the farm? Uh, little, to get little pigs. What are you gonna do when we get our pigs? Ride them. You gonna ride them. <laughs> First thing we had to do is get ready, locate feed pans. Will you go get our feed pan, Jonah? All right, go wash it out, please, with that scrub brush. Thank you, buddy. Here's another one. We might do our automatic water. I have no idea how to water a pig. I don't know, they're probably too short to get out of that yellow bucket, or pink bucket. We take this too, just in case we use that. The owners will know what we do for water. Thank you, Jonah, those look good. Okay guys, I think we're ready. We have feed pans, potential waterers. We have our soaked feed. We have our stall ready. They're coming, the people are gonna deliver them. I'm gonna dump it out in the middle and everybody can spread it evenly. The pigs are here. In a minivan. That's a good sign. If they came in a minivan. They're carrying two pigs in a minivan. That probably means we're gonna be it's gonna be easy to put them in the stall. Hi. Can you say hi? Hey, Danae. <laughs> Justin. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. That's what they do when they get stressed out, just go to sleep? Pretty much, they slept most <laughs> of the way, yeah. <laughs> they seem like they're pretty laid back. Um, until you try to catch them. <laughs> hey! Oh. <laughs> you like to pet them? There they come. So they're used to, they're used to kids? Yeah. If we stand over here, maybe they'll come out. You could tip it up, Jonah, if you want. Slowly though. There they go. There they are. <laughs> you guys are gonna till this up, stir it up for us, aren't you? Soaked feed. This is a, a room. Okay, you got some feed? Yep. Okay, I've got some feed. Mama's got the water. Fed them grass. Oh good, did they eat it? Yeah, they're eating it. Okay, go. it helps you find your rice knife. They kind of want to squeeze in there at the floor. Okay, they're, they're, like they're right hungry by the door. to get out. You, well, they're eating right by the door for one. Oh, because they brought the yeah. grass there. Uh -oh. <laughs> After getting them in, I feel like so relaxed. They're so laid back, look. Look, I can, I can pet them. They said forget the grass. They pop up. Oh, they'll, they'll chow down on them. They'll probably eat all we would give them. Pretty much them. anything. <laughs> and these guys are so chill. They're so small. Grab the water and pour it. I, I will. I haven't even gotten near. Lily, they let you pet them. They're a lot calmer than the sheep. It takes a while to get them to be able to do this. Okay, they love that. They're gonna about to eat all that grain. Then we got them some grass. We got them some apple cider vinegar and some water. I want to pick a pitch. Good, you want to? Come on. She'll help you. Come here. Pet them. The handkerchief they got. There you go. Yeah. Good. I got you. I believe we could catch them and carry them if we absolutely had to. So this is totally non-intimidating first time pig experience so far. Very happy about that. Look behind you guys. I love you guys. You guys are awesome. They're turning the feed into jowl bacon and bacon and sausage and head cheese. <laughs> Ooh, I like it, I like it. Time by. Bye. Put your char tester on there to make sure it has juice. 80. Okay, it's Ooh, that hard, watch, watch. Spot. Everybody just be patient. Well, he just ate it? No, they're gonna just be curious and touch that fence. Why a bang, 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 bang. <laughs> That's one trained. 
That's one way to get the water over here. Putting the fence up for the pigs? Yes, we we, we got to see one of them get shot. Like Let me tell you, that, that one will never touch that fence on purpose again. You guys ready? You been trained on your electric fence? I think so. Look how lucky we got Jonah. The posts ended up being right there exactly where we wanted. That's crazy. You making those go down? That's good, that's handy. Go do that over on the, Others. go do it on that one. There you go. Oh look, Josiah got it down. Oh, he took it off the top of the pole. Yeah. Boy, just I don't think you're gonna have a problem getting them out. They're charging the gate right now. Piggy piggies! Oh, they found them a fret. They found they missed somehow missed the avocado last night. Alright, just uh, get their attention. Go, go show it to him, show it to him, show it to him. Hey, don't scare him, Jonah. Don't scare him. Put it right there, just uh, put it right there. Wow, I thought they'd come right to your feet. Things were going all good, and then the pigs got out. Pigs out! What? A pigs out! Come okay, on. quick, get some grain. Oh, well, I already had the jean scraps. Uh, okay. Quick scraps. Did they come to that? They like. Okay, it. hold on. I'll help you. It's not gonna do it. Come in. How do you know? Oh my! See the pig? Apparently, it's dug under the fence. There he is. Okay, see if you can't follow your bucket. Okay. <laughs> Here, get his attention with the food scrap bucket. We want to get his attention real good before this other one gets out. Come on. Come on. Oh my gosh. You rascals. <laughs> Why didn't I pop him? This fence is not on. The fence wasn't on. Hey, Josiah, you know the fence wasn't on. That'll do it. Bring it in. Here, what you want to do? Let's pour about, pour about half of it in this. In this. Just listen to me. Pour about half of it in this. Oh, okay. I see. Okay. Pour about half of it. Not all of it. Okay, that's enough. Uh, you just poured all of it in there. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Look. 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 Get, come over, come over, just high. Come over. Well, that was easy. Go get your string trimmer. Let's reinforce this pig. It's hard. There you go. Look at that tail job, though. You guys don't play. We string trim just to make sure this is real hot. We lowered the fence. You guys ready? Most importantly, we're turning it back on. All right. See how they muck this up? They've got it, they've got it uh, good and tilled. Smelling like a pigsty, we gotta get them out. Ready? Let's move this fence. Wow, that was relatively easy. The pigs were out, we <laughs> just encompassed them where they're supposed to be. Are you happy? Are you happy? Look how good you did, tilling. On to the next job. And isn't there just something so right about getting animals on fresh grass? Aren't you guys just happy as can be roaming this grass? Huh? Are you happy as can be? Huh? <laughs> See over there? See over there, the bare spot? See that bare spot, kids, where the pigs were? That's our mission today. Plant a garden there. Y'all ready? We're gonna plant the three sisters. That's what you yeah. want to do. Corn, beans. Do we have runner beans? Yeah, mama's got them. And squash. And so you got the plates. Yeah. You've got pitchforks for your wood. Yeah. So take the take everything over there, and then and then go. To the That's some hard workers. Good job, guys. You fill one wheelbarrow, one left. 
Papa, I need help on balancing. Oh, you want to do it? Go ahead. Somebody's got to hang on to it while I fill this. You going to balance it? No, you got to balance it. Papa. I'll hold it. Got it. Johnny, yeah. can you carry a little wheelbarrow that full? All right, well, Johnny, you know what we're gonna do? Let's go. I think traditionally you're supposed to create mounds. Create, I guess, just as many mounds as you can, okay, buddy? Okay. Maybe three or four feet apart. You having a hard time with that? Um, Try again. Look. look That's not bad. I have to, like, it. That's not so bad. You got it. I think it's what they How about do. I'll make the mounds and you plant them? Okay. Look, Johnny, here. Here's your seeds. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna build a mound so you can put a plate on top of it. Hey, you gonna help me? Oh, good. The water's clean. Very weird that their water's clean, right, Papa? Yep. It is. It's weird since they're pigs, but they keep the water clean. Here we are, one of my favorite elements in the farm. Why? The pig. Rich manure till fast eat anything. Did I tell you I love you? Oh, don't jump, don't jump. Oh, he's, he's looking at me. He, he might take me down. You don't like a head scratch? There you go, that's better. Come on. Come on, you guys are growing fast. What? Nothing's growing. Nothing's growing over here? No. Give us some time. We planted it by seed. It's gotta germinate and grow, we'll see. We don't have much to lose there. Oh yes, yeah, something is growing. Some of your cover crops are sprouting. The pigs are over there. This is our crop garden chickens. You know, we're not gonna plant in June. We're taking a little break. Gonna start planting again in July. In the greenhouse, those plants grow up, then we need to transfer. So they've got two months. I don't know if they're gonna get that down in two months. I'm thinking real hard about blending the chickens and the pigs to speed up that process. Well, I have them on two jobs if I don't have to. If we're gonna, I know there's some difficulties to work out, but uh, you know, we gotta keep the chickens' feet elevated. Uh, I think these chickens are big enough, the pigs are small enough that the pigs aren't gonna eat them. I think it would be cool. It would definitely cut our chores down some if we could blend them. Today we gotta get the pigs out of where they are. See, we are overdue for a move. Josiah, how's your automatic water working out? Good. Looks like it's working out good. You know, Josiah's trying to make his chores easier. I'm all for that. He actually asked me to go to Tractor Supply one day so he could get some things to make his chores easier. But, but not the pigs. We haven't built a shelter yet, so we're still dependent on the stall. We're gonna need to make a lane from the stall out to here and then another square garden area like that. So, Josiah, let's use this for our lane. We'll set up another fence right here. It's hard figuring it out sometimes. Yeah. Okay, I think I got it. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take one of these extra pig fences. We're going to start one right here. And then we're gonna start one end of it right there. And then the other end of it right there. That leaves an opening. We'll, we'll, we'll uh, drape it around as big as we need to. If we have some extra, we'll loop it back on itself. Can we get our posts too? I, I can get them in the stall. No, okay. we're not posting. Good. I'll get them in the stall. Well, hold on, hold on. You, know, you think that would be the method to do? Yeah. yeah Just get them in the go stall? Them, go distract them. That's not a terrible idea. Wait, take the food in there for them. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Papa, what do I do now? You the what? Pigs. <laughs> the pigs. Don't lay down. Jonah! Jonah, you got to come get your food. Wait, don't you want to feed them? No, not yet, Papa. That's how we're going to them. No. They're not getting it. Hey, if if you guys lure them into the stall with food, they can eat. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey. Hey, if you lure them to the stall with food, 
They can eat. And then when we get this set up, they can just come out They're on their own. They're following you. Look, Papa. Okay. Papa, they come to me. They know me. And, and they okay, but me. I want to feed them. They're hungry. It's getting late. Go get their turkey. Well, then how are we going to get them into the other paddock? They'll come out to shoot when they want to, and they'll go into the other paddock. They will. Here's what we got going on up here. Basically, we started with one fence on either side. See, we did that fence. That ends at the that ends at the stall, and then it comes all the way out and around as far as it'll go in that paddock. And then we did the other fence on the other side of the stall, and came all the way out around. They met each other. They crossed each over each other. Hey, I'll, I'll climb off the roof. Thanks, so. I think I trust getting off this roof more than I trust that widow maker ladder. Put the energizer on the lower one, you got it. And flip it around. Okay, you got it. You got it ground in? Yeah, flip it around towards the sun. Okay, ready? Let's go release the hounds, Papa. Actually, we should put this over there because the sun's going to be behind this building real soon. The theory is they're going to walk down this chute and into our new garden area. See, look what they've left behind. We got cover crop. We got our three sisters coming up. <laughs> Have you all made it out? Our goal is to plant this today. They made it out. No problem. I know because the grass is already wearing out. They've made a circle right there. I made that path. Oh, it doesn't take them long. And is it? And their their daughters? No, maybe they haven't made it out. I think they've made it out. Well, they have now. So, as you can see, pigs can really tear up the place. So we began to discover, though, and used our permaculture principles, which is what turn a problem into a solution. Wait, pigs tear up the place. That's good. We need some tilling done on the gardens. Could we blend? our pigs with our chickens who are already doing the gardening. I think we can, but we're going to need a shelter for the pigs. They can't live in our coop. So I kind of just slapped together an idea for a shelter, you know, where maybe the roof would face the sun and be a place for them to get out of the sun and the rain and eventually maybe even the frost and the snow. measure this and see if six feet will do. I'm hoping six feet will do it. But... It's heavy. I don't want it to be so heavy we can't drag this thing, but I want it to be adequate. Yesterday we went to Lowe's. We got all our supplies. I don't think it's too crazy. I have this kind of idea for kind of like a lean-to type shelter. That's a very rough draft of what we're building that will face towards the sun to give them max protection. If we're gonna have a six foot shade structure, let's make seven foot skids. I'm excited to get started today. I'm excited about this kind of work. We're gonna put two together for one skid, one on each side. Now let's do our angle cuts. Whether it's working on some sort of shelter or coop or creating a video or planting something in the garden, that's just the skids. That doesn't look too big. It's gonna be a foot shorter than that. There's something so satisfactory about that kind of work. I know what it is. Make an angle cut so that it will pull easier. When you work with your hands, your imagination to create, build, or grow something, you then have something to show for all that effort. This part is for you, buddy. Yeah. We got our skids. Now we just gotta screw them oh, together. Papa, can I take those blinkers off? It doesn't. Maybe, sure. But let's let's do that on your own free time. Okay. okay. He's gonna take the edges down with his Dremel. At the beginning of the process, you have nothing. Well, you do have something. You have an idea, something in your head. And by the end of it, you have something that you can touch, watch, see, smell, taste. 
Look, John, I could use a couple more screws right there. It's, it's a gap. That's what makes this kind of work so enjoyable. There's our skids. It's gonna be a slanted roof. Gotta figure out where I want it to start. I don't want to put it all the way down. I want some ventilation coming through. Let's go. Okay, this is very manageable. This is um, even lighter than the mineral sled. Yeah. The cow. Yeah. What's going on? Get off of it. <laughs> <laughs> But we're gonna get them used to this. So then we can move them anywhere we want. And we're not limited to the shed. <laughs> nice. We got you a hangout, okay? We got you a hangout. Time to move the pigs. We're moving the pigs in with the chickens. Kind of. We have an idea. We have a perimeter fence around this garden area. But the chickens aren't tilling this fast enough. We're gonna need to plant here in three weeks. So they need a little help. We're gonna give them a little help with the pigs. So Jonah, I'm kinda gonna go off your idea. Your idea was to run a poultry net through the, mid through the middle of this and put pigs on side, one side and chickens on the other, right? Yeah, let's do that. But let's take it a step further and let's put a pig net down the middle. Yes, yes, I was thinking Because that's that. less heavy duty. And if the chickens want, they can maybe get through that pig net it would be on their terms and they could get to the pigs and they could maybe sort of get used to each other. Yeah. What do you think? And then maybe one day we can blend them. We're gonna run our pig netting right through the middle. And we're gonna put the pigs on this side because it needs more assistance. We've got our pig net up and Joe I had a good idea. I was just kinda gonna go back and forth. I mean, the pig net is 100 feet long, not 25 feet long or whatever this is. So it would just be going back and forth on itself. Josiah had the idea to go around the exterior. I like that idea because if you go back and forth on this, the chickens can't get through. I, I, like I said, I, I don't mind. I sort of want them uh, to get through if they want. They're probably, they're not, it's not like they're gonna be barging through. That's gonna be a pretty good barrier. I like this combo thing. Even if they're just next to each other, you only have to use one energizer. So that frees up an energizer for us that we could go put on the sheep since they're getting further and further away. The waters and the feet will be near each other, although maybe they're not in the same pen, it'll still be near. Hey guys, you ready to move? You ready to move? Hmm. Hmm. Huh? Huh guys? I like you. I like you a lot. You ready Josiah? All right, let's move them. You got those poles queued up? Hey, y'all hungry? That's the trick, the moving pigs. A lot of animals. Do it in the morning after they've had that small fast. They're gonna follow us anywhere. Come on, pigs. <laughs> they're the easiest. They're the easiest animal to move. Oh my gosh. Oh. Uh oh. Can you? Oh boy. Pull my line down, Josiah. Pull the long one. There one. Pull it right through. Keep, keep pulling. There you go. Now you should unravel it. And then just drop it before they figure out this sense is off and learn to charge an electric fence. We're gonna have to make a corner right here, okay? Before we put their corner up, quickly, before they eat all their food. Let's go get the uh, shade shade shelter. Tosai, let's move this shelter real quick. We can come get our pig fence later, but we gotta hurry while they're eating. Thank you. Now we can put up the fence. Now that we have the shelter in here, we can bring our water later. Let them out. You got new neighbors. Stress-free introduction to pigs right here. This is my least favorite stage in the animal garden miracle where the pigs and the chickens have prepped this land, but it's like ready. It's ready to be planted. It's bare. Mother, Mother Nature does not like to be uh, uncovered. She likes to be covered. We're going to move you guys. 
fresh green grass, okay? And then we're gonna cover this with fall cover crops to prepare this for next year's garden area. We're going to remove all these support posts. Then we're going to open this fence up, move the pigs over there. This is the risky part here, Jonah. You wanna get their feed and get them a trough, get them a trough. Here, we'll let them through. I don't think we're gonna have a problem. <laughs> Thank you. If they get done, we'll just lure them back in with a bucket. Lift it up. Probably the pan got split. I see that. All right. While they're eating and pigging out, we hurry up and move this fin. All right. Time's ticking. <laughs> They're done. What'd you feed them? There, is there anything in there? Okay. And then we'll move everything else. Okay, you're gonna put that down, I'll drive over it. If the pigs don't get out first. <laughs> Hold on, you gotta help me with the fence. You ready? Flipping it, you're gonna put it with the other pallet. You're gonna put it right here. <laughs> really? <laughs> you found your limit, huh? Oh look, they found somewhere in here. Oh, yeah. fail for you. Look at how nice and like clean they are. All that rain did them yeah. good. It's a new partnership, guys. The pigs are all up in it. Chickens are standing by for a new unveiling of food. <laughs> Look. Amazing. I just want to give that pig a hug. He's digging it up. The chickens are getting at it. He's eating something out of there. What are you eating out of there? You guys are just standing by. You don't have to do any work anymore. Yes. I'm looking around and seeing what needs to be done. They're yeah, definitely yeah, done in here. Yeah, yeah. There comes a stage when they begin to stop fluffing it and they begin to start compacting it. So we're gonna definitely get these guys out of here. They're overdue. Remember, I hoped that this would just pop and be unrecognizable when we came back. Look at that chard. Boom, boom. Boom. Oh, show me where the pig went in the house. It was raining bad, so we decided to put it inside so their grain wouldn't get drenched. Oh yeah, look. It looks rich. Do you think Do you the sagging it? was from the pigs? Or no, on it? there was some on the new, this got oh, out look on the at this. Or is there a heavy load? So Jonah, do you think the pig got in here and too much weight and ripped that up? Oh, I saw him walking out of here. So okay, we'll see, he's, he's pulled there, so. He must have laid down. Oh, Papa, we got to do a whole new cross piece he must have thought over it was this a middle scratch. section. Papa, he must have thought it was a back scratch and rolled yeah. on it. And then I came back and the, the pigs walked out of the chick shawl. One pig. I don't know if the other one was in there and just got up. Alright, well let's more. not put the feed in here anymore even yeah. if it's raining. Yeah. That was not, I see where you're coming from on that, but. Sorry, I didn't know that was going to okay. happen. I know. Okay. Um, let's fix you didn't it tomorrow. Know. I didn't know either. I wouldn't have thought. How does that look? It looks fluffy too. It looks good, man. It looks freshly weeded.
By the end of that first season, we got the gardening system down. This, right next door, looked like this two weeks ago. So that's gonna take them two weeks. In two weeks, we've got this. We're In a minute, we're gonna rake this smooth, pull out any major sod. Two weeks before that, they were in here. They did this area. We planted this in cover crop, put some hay over it. Look, the cover crop is coming up just below the surface there. Can you see it? And before that garden bed, they were in here. And look how well the cover crop is coming up in here. And by the way, this is a cold hardy cover crop. Germinates down to 45 degrees, grows down to 25 degrees. And where were they before this? This is where they were. We had these low tunnels on because it's winter, we're protecting them from frost. Here's a patch that was planted in cover crop. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? Now, for the best part, the surprise. What's under these tunnels? You know what's under this tunnel? Unbelievable abundance. Look at these lettuces. Oh my word, how beautiful. Oh my, and it just goes on for like ever. We're gonna be harvesting salad out of there all winter long. We got bigger, more traditional, fast-growing pigs compared to the American guinea hogs, which are a slower, more traditional pig. We got these guys and thought our life would be easier if we blended them. Here we go, so far so good, guys. Come on. Come on. And then the leading failed. It was not working. No oh boy. Not good. Here, come here, come here, come here. And thankfully there was lots of people behind him. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, they're not responding to me. Not good. Come here. At one point, they th the three pigs were scattering pretty crazy and I said, oh boy. Okay. All right. And I was about to go get some net so, so we could keep them somewhat, hopefully, corralled. But somehow, all those folks put their brains together and, and just were able to somehow herd those pigs. Come on. Come on. Come on. You get them in here, we sort of have a wall. This was too risky. They are not following this bucket. Okay. Open it wide. Come on. Come on. Somebody cut off this path, Brett. Go around and cut off this path. There you go. Good. There you go. Hey, we got one almost in. Oh my gosh. I'm glad we did this with all these people. Because they were not going in. Yeah! Wow, you can hurt pigs. Let's see how they're gonna do with each other. We got much bigger. That fence is not on, but they're scared of it, look. And then they pretty much ignored the guinea hogs, but then as they began to kind of approach them, I noticed the guinea hog was standing in its ground. It was kind of funny. They don't care about the pigs. Right. <laughs> You're just going right. <laughs> You're going right for the feed. You don't care, chair, care about trying to claim your. <laughs> that was the boss sitting in. The guinea hog. Oh look! Head. <laughs> it's like uh uh. Look, look. Oh look! Look, he's going around. He's trying to do it. You guinea, you holding your ground. <laughs> look at this. He's like, this is my house. You know, it kept going from there. I mean. I thought they would maybe quickly establish who's boss, and the, the, the guinea hog tried to stand his ground, but these bigger pigs were just able to easily just like, rah, and get them to give in. One male and two females. The male just kept chasing the guinea hog. And we thought, they'll settle down, and you know, we were out there talking, and like, we need to get out of here with Laurel, we need to get out of here with our people, maybe they'll settle down. Well, I checked on them every once in a while, and they seem to have been settling down. Maybe a little bit of ruckus. Chicken! 
That one's got a bone to pick for that one. That didn't work, so we separated them out. At the end of season one, it was interesting because we could sort of compare the small, slow-growing traditional breeds to the more fast, industry-style traditional breeds. And this is what I had discovered. Can I tell you something else about the guinea hogs, the American guinea hogs? Well, first of all, they follow food better than the traditional hogs. Here, yeah, you guys, this is gonna count because they're not really following my food. Hey, jo Josiah, can you come lead with the food? I'll help her. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, they're not responding to me. They eat absolutely anything without hesitation, including weeds. Three, they don't get terribly big. They don't have a ounce of aggression. And three, they didn't hesitate to eat chickens or any other dead thing that happened to be on the farm. Fish, mouse, just ate it right up. Made super, were super efficient with everything. Well, they're probably not gonna eat that lemon peel, but they eat uh, watermelon rinds, uh, banana peels, broccoli stems, things that chickens maybe would eventually eat before it rots. Kind of not really. And the other thing, as much as they'll eat a dead chicken, which is great, because if a chicken dies, it's sad. But there's some redemption when that chicken, when you can turn that chicken into bacon. Um, but one day, actually the other day, during that crazy wind, we had some crazy wind, it actually blew up the pig shelter and tilted this up on a willy. I don't know if we had a kickstand or not. A chicken died. A chicken got squashed and died. And then the pigs ate it. But yet, they don't eat these guys. Now, I don't know if it's because it's the American guinea hog or it's their particular nature, but they've lived very well with these chickens. I might be a little bit nervous with those traditional hogs. That's my take on uh, guinea hogs. And did I say they would follow you anywhere? They would follow a bucket. They'll follow a bucket. And in Jim and Rinda's experience, they don't even need to follow a bucket. They will follow you anywhere. I mean, I had them like 200 yards away. They followed me all the way home and I had no food with me. Just seeing me was enough to get them to come along. So they're attached. So going into season two, we opted for the faster growing, bigger pork because we needed to get some stuff done fast. We wanted it to grow up fast. We just wanted that food fast. So we went out to Tennessee to already a mentor of mine, Cliff Davis. We had met him on the Great American Farm Tour. He's doing some amazing things. And we went to get some piglets from him, but we also went there for some inspiration and advice. Mainly his pigs clearing forest systems. Here's an example of a place that, that when I first put bought pigs, okay. they cleared this area out and now there's pecans in there, chestnut, apples, ah. cranberry, cherries. This over here looks more cleared and actually has productive fruit, yep. trees that you desire, yep. and this is what it looked like. That's right. They go in there, uh -huh. they hit it really hard, okay. and then I go in, I can walk, like I can't even hardly walk in there. No. So then I can walk in there and then I start chopping and dropping okay. and um, and then making biochar and okay, yeah. taking stuff out that might be useful, leaving stuff that I want to keep. Is that cover crop in there or is that native grass? That's both. Rye and vetch. Okay. There's probably some clover in there, chickweed. Okay. So what kind of maintenance goes on in here then? <laughs> Not much. Do you, when, do the, you, when the grass gets high, I put up a fence and I bring them in. Well, it's happening. 
Our car broke down here 311 miles, Tennessee from North Carolina, to pick up pigs, five pigs, five pigs, in the back of our minivan. Rebecca thought of this amazing idea to rent a U-Haul and a flat tow trailer so the pigs are level. Seriously, <laughs> this is our rig home. The gauges for them is in the van. It's one reason why we wanted the trailer to always, so the van will be sitting flat. Yeah, because you can't put pigs in the box trailer. There's no ventilation. All right, Justin. How's it feeling? It's, it's, it's a bit different than yesterday. Whoa. I know, right? <laughs> we got to lift them right. high. <laughs> okay, yeah. so this comes down. <laughs> yep. You don't think they'll jump over that board, do you? Oh my gosh, there's no lid. That'd be interesting. You think they might climb out? Um, we couldn't get the lid on because we had to... Yeah, you have it sideways. We had to collapse it to get in here. That would be crazy if, if one got out and we were in here to know it. Well, then you can just make it into a pig house when you get home. <laughs> a mobile put it house. in the Because it will field. drive a little bit. Put it in the field. <laughs> There's two things I'm concerned about is one is the top and then one is those little those sides. <laughs> that they might fit through that? Yeah. We're looking at maybe a pallet. I don't know if it's... Yeah, it's hard. That's why I couldn't get the roof in there. Yeah, because it's just got... It's yeah. that one corner. It arches. It's yeah. top. Just metal scrap here? Yep. What if we put both of those on there and zip tie? You got some zip ties? That'll work. Oh yeah, you could get... You could make it to the... Yep. To the board. You might even make it to the... They're actually going to make it to the frame. It was like a change for this. There you go. That's crazy how perfect those fit. Now he's worried that they might get out the side. What do you think? Two is too small, probably. What about this? Oh, there you go. What about that? You sure you don't need that? It's shifted? No, it's just lying around. What? It's just almost perfect. Is this crazy or what? Dude, it couldn't be any better. <laughs> That's crazy. Is that metal wire? <laughs> there you are. I see you. Whoa, 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 whoa. Pig moving. So these all four got together. <laughs> yes, this one jumped over here when that hey. one started squealing. Get in there. Okay, okay. Oh, now they're all together. All right, they'll move. Five pigs inside of a minivan on a trailer behind a U-Haul truck. <laughs> yeah. 15 foot U-Haul truck. Yeah. I went away from that with an amazing inspiration to use pigs on our farm to help us create more pasture. See, we have mostly forest here, but we have a lot of ruminant animals and we sure could use more pasture. And because we have a lot of forest, that just happens to be what pigs like. So I went away with amazing inspiration from Cliff. Thank you, Cliff. Oh shoot. Oh, shoot. Oh. Reclaim. The forest is reclaiming the pasture and we, we, we want to partner. We want to partner. We don't want to get rid of the forest. We want to, as Joel Salatin says, pasture our forest and forest our pastures. So it's clear some of these trees. So grass will grow in there. Be a nice habitat for pigs. Nice habitat for cows. Out in the, fo out in the pastures we'll plant trees. Look how crazy dense this is. It's hard to see the vision down here because there's so many trees. So let me take you to a spot that is closer to where we want to be. We are at the top of the pasture. Look at this beautiful view. Won't it be nice to see this? Right there. Pasture, but over here, forest. Oh, or is it, is it a pastured forest? This is what I'm talking about, guys. Sure, the briars are up. The pigs are going to help us with that. But look, amongst the trees, grass. Look how nice. Doesn't this feel just right? This feels amazing. You made it. You made it. 
you want to clean that up or go and do what you just did there on the strips i'd say use this to do the strips it's a lot easier okay. with all those vines just plow through oh yeah and then we can go back okay oh yeah Once was not a trail, is a trail. Wrapping up the day, pretty happy. Got a perimeter trail established. Got cross lines established. Yes. Yes, there's a cross line example. That way we can run a cross fence through here, a cross fence down there, and browse this middle stuff. We want to build, I've got a carport. It arrived yesterday. That's my best idea to showcase how you guys, with little land, can keep pigs. And there's our cattle panels. That's gonna be our walls. Right. And I'm thinking this tin would be our sides. And it's holding in mulch, okay? okay. We're gonna start off with a foot of, of wood chips. Right. And we're just gonna add mulch, wood chips, as we go. As the pigs age, as the pigs uh, manure on it. Okay. And Start with a foot, hopefully not get much higher than this by right. September. 10 foot by 12, two pigs. And then just holding this back with T-posts. Yeah. Putting in T-posts every two feet. That'd be, a, I think that'd be more simpler. Just do the zip ties. I'm trying to make, Jason, let's make this as simple <laughs> as possible. Mine and your brain yeah. together. Yeah, yeah. We can make this. Okay. I just want other people to be able to do this. Okay. Or at least be inspired by this. They say, oh, I have a shed. I could right. I could get some tin and some cattle panels like super cheap. Right. Or if I don't, I could go buy a carport. Basically cattle panels and zip ties. Yeah, <laughs> and then this will last for years. We're turning one garden plot into the compost corner. We're gonna have the pig shed in here and then chickens too. And chickens will be making compost and the pigs will be too. And this is either on site for gardens next year or we can easily this is uphill notice. We can easily wheelbarrow our material down to the other gardens. Just putting in those screws, dude, is gonna take all day. <laughs> oh yeah, that's that's serious, dude. This is gonna be firm enough to be the corner wall. <clears throat> I did good, it's not a flimsy. <laughs> Swallowed a gnat. <laughs> God. Okay, now I gotta swallow a fly to get the gnat. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, this is looking legit. Yeah. This is sturdy. One, two, three. While we were setting up the forest system and the pig port, the pigs had to be somewhere, so we let them out of our physical holding into this run, which ended up proving to be a possible solution for somebody who has more than 240 square feet. Maybe they have seven, 800 square feet. This compost corner system for pigs. Real quick look at the system. Premier One electric pig net. Simple, easy to set up in an outdoor run. They could come out and get the sunshine. They have a shed. This could be off of a barn. This could be a carport. A simple 50 gallon waterer. Two feed pans. A compost bin right in the midst of it. And this is the key right here. If you're gonna keep pigs in a small area, deep mulch. This is wood chips. They tend to poop in manure, look, on the wood chips. What to do with it to keep it clean in a small space, keep it sanitary in here. That's where the compost bin comes in. It's four walls to keep them out of it. This fills up, it starts to heat up, breaks down the uh, bacteria, fries it, and anything else that might be in it. And then we remove the walls and the pigs help us turn. Notice how we have the pallet as far as we could get away from the fence. This ramp just above the fence so that we can get other materials in here. That's one system, but I wanted to showcase more. The pig port. Morning. Come here and check this out. Jason back for some more. Jason, you're gonna be my left-hand man All today. Right. <laughs> Sounds good. Doing some things I cannot do. I think you need some help. Yes. <laughs> 
Look at this. We got the material nice. in, bro. Okay. I can see it now. You can see it now. <laughs> it doesn't look nice. Yeah. And I noticed yesterday. Hey, dude, we were able to haul material in with the tractor, too. Oh, you were? Right through there. You didn't have to take this down? No. Okay. I didn't take it down. The tractor bucket could fit right through there. We put a layer of logs, and then we put a layer, probably about three cubic yards of compost that was already hot, and then maybe about a half a yard of wood chips on top. Don't you see it now? Okay. I see it now. Doesn't this look like a nice habitat? Yeah, it does. For a couple of pigs? <laughs> now it's time to move the pigs. I'm trying to move to the pigs. Okay, you want me to hold this? Okay. Okay. That's what are you going to try? <laughs> Oh, good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you're a, you're a man's man, aren't you? Uh. Yeah. <laughs> Did you just go over there, and grab that pig's by the back legs. Was that easy? Yeah. If you can do it, we can do it, huh? Yeah. I think we can do it. We always we always figure out a way, don't we? This sheep fence is a little well. It is big overkill for pigs. Unfortunately, you have to electrify every single strand, so it's going to take more power. The reason we're doing this, though, is look, our house is there. The forest here, protected from the coyotes and sasquatches, y'all. The forest project begins. Maybe, maybe this is smoking hot. Personally, I think it needs to be maxed out. Moment of truth. Oh, 6K. clear spot for it right there. I think they're gonna be happy up under that pine tree. Probably we're gonna spend their time, but we're just gonna give them this just in case. Are you pulling that through, I'll guide you. All right, fellas, take one of those pans and let's lure the pigs into the stall. I think they're always hungry for skim. Like that was easy. I just don't know if I could lead them across the entire farm. We got our barrel out here next to our water source. Can we get a hose? Gonna fill it up. Got to get over the nipple water and then a little bit more. Enough for a day, which would be about right there. And hopefully we can shimmy that off at the end. And it is here. They're gonna fill that water up. We're gonna check and see if, I don't think the dog crate's gonna fit in that. What do you think, J Jason? I don't know, I haven't seen the dog crate. <laughs> Try not to grab him by the hoofs, just above the hoofs, and lift him up. Cause Should that... we grab above the knee, right here? No, no, we were grabbing on the shin. Okay. Right here, lifting him up, and then Anna so will grab see. one side. Come on in. Okay, let's shoot these guys out. <laughs> there he is. Just commit. Grab the other leg. Good job. Good job. Good job. There we go. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. We just lifted him, what, a month ago? Not even. Okay. Three weeks? Giddy, yeah, just one here, person. Baby. Come over here. I know. There's like three, four people. Wait, no. Pig number two, was that not a lot easier? Can we let that down? Yeah. Now? Well, he's looking at it, man. He's a lot smaller. Okay. There they are. Three, three pigs. I think they'll be happier together. That's just a short ride to the forest. You guys, you guys just got so much better. There you go. Thankfully, they're trained to the electric fence. I don't think he's gonna try it. It's not on. Look, he's coming out on his own. Shady, oh look, is he gonna eat the bomb of Gilead? Please eat the bomb of Gilead. <laughs> I think he's just seeking shelter. Good. I want to see you eat something. Good 
Don't look. <laughs> he says, I'm done. I'm, I'm over it. <laughs> That's where I'm supposed to be. See y'all later. All right. That's a good sign, Jason. Not too stressed to eat. One thing about moving those pigs I'd do different is I probably would have just opened up the side of that in the first place. I would have made sure I trained the pigs to a bucket. I would have got pig boards uh, that I learned about those at Joel Salatin's. They're like these, pla I got some now, but they're these plastic light boards and it's great for herding pigs. So I had a few people maybe herding them in the back and maybe somebody in the front leading them with a bucket. Sure. Little wet over there. A little moist manure here. So yeah, see see our wood chips that will be over it? That's good. We want to cover this with our wood chips. This is a bit of an experimental system. There are people who have done pigs on deep bedding, Joe Salatin namely, uh, Richard Perkins, with great success, and so we're trying to bring it down to the homestead level. Going to try different things to experiment th throughout this the summer and then at the end teach you what worked and what didn't. Just covering it up with that wood chips took f maybe five minutes. It seems nice, like a nice place to live. How are you guys doing this morning? <laughs> After the wild move yesterday, huh? You happy? Eat all your food? I need to open this please. Okay. Why do you need it open? So they need to put the feed pan. You're gonna put the other feed pan. We'll have two feed pans, okay? One right there. Oh, there's one. Here, let's save that one for water. You're going in? Yeah. I'm not really going in, but you can go in if you like. Jump over. The cool thing about pigs is they're clean animals. They poop in one side of the area, usually furthest away from their feet. They're pooping over there. We're just gonna simply cover that up, keep the flies off of it. Keep it breaking down, mixing it with this carbon material. I didn't see much animal protein in there, so I'm gonna give you some, okay? Yeah. <laughs> so what if you're a healthy conscience family, you couldn't source quality pork in the grocery store, maybe you could find some at the market, maybe some non-GMO, but then it's terribly expensive. What if you didn't have much room, like you lived in a neighborhood? Well, what if you had a carport, 12 by 20? What if you put half of it into a pig pen with simple... What'd you say, buddy? I hope the pigs won't bite me. They won't bite you. Just stay right there. What if you had a... And then what if you got together some cattle panels, kipos to help support them, zip ties to attach tin as a retaining wall? Just what if? Just what if, what if you, you partnered with your local town or power company to be a place to drop off wood chips? You could totally, what'd you say? Is that the power company? Yeah, the one on the, uh, the west. this one's from the power company. This one's from our local town. Uh, oftentimes they have to chip. I have the room, so I put it there on the bank next to the road. You could totally put it under this side. That's why I call this a 240 square foot farm because this is a total Papa, I mean how did they this? you are how did full they of questions that? this morning aren't you how did they, dump that? they dumped it with dump trucks also, two pigs 200 pounds of pork out of each of these guys buy them when they're two months old raise them until they're seven months old keeping them only for five months on this deep bedding look he's happy in there you as you saw they manure over there, Jonah has put the wood chips in. Thank you very much. He's foraging from that mulch. Good. He's probably going to find some stuff in it. Yeah. This is good. When they lay down to eat, they're burning no calories. <laughs> very low calories. <laughs> they're gaining weight. All right. That's plenty of food for them today. So the first thing you want to think about with your, let's call this the, let's, let's do it. Let's call this the pig port. Huh? Get it? I see that. Pigs inside there, inside a carport, pig port, 
also kind of speaks to its mobility. This is not a permanent situation. But think about when you're placing this, how can the pigs benefit the farm if you've got more farm? And how can the farm benefit the pigs? Well, the pigs are right here next to the garden. So we can harvest what we don't use, throw it in there. That's a carrot. No, but it looks like a carrot. And then when we're done with this, it'll break down while they're on it, after they leave. And then this is a future garden bed. And if it's not, we just wheelbarrow it from here, down slope to our other garden beds. I interrupt this show. Hopefully you're having a great time. I won't keep you long here, but just one, just, just a quick reminder. If you guys wanna know how to set up a pig fence, what pig breed to get, how to do this in small spaces. Uh, if you wanna learn the practicals of what I'm doing and learning myself in this film, I end up teaching it in a course, Permaculture Pigs, and we released it. We just now dropped it on Abundance Plus. You can get in on this Permaculture Pigs course and all the other goodies in Abundance Plus at AbundancePlus.com, link in the description. They're here, no disturbance in here. Hey, do we have any in? Hey, look, we have some disturbance over here in their little sh shelter. Hey, let's continue to encourage them to disturb. Throw it right in there, Josiah. They have this, this some disturbance where they hid last night. Yay. Have you guys come over here? I think there's a little bit right here under the pine tree. Oh yeah, looky here, looky here. This is probably nice because it's under that pine tree. And this moss. Okay. So we have some disturbance now. Let's direct their disturbance by putting it, putting feed where we want them to work. Yeah. So we put their feed in there. They're not used to this yet. They've been fed in pans. You guys have to work a little harder for it. Papa, let's see how much they have getting. No, oh, these, these are the happiest pigs on the planet right here. So later on, that second season, like the second se the first season was like <laughs> crash course, and the second season is like, let's get it down. Let's get some guides. Let's do this. So later in that summer, we got up with one of my longtime mentors via books, Joel Salatin, but we lined him up to coach us on pigs. A covered shelter with deep bedding is better than a moonscape yard um, if it's not rotated. Yeah. In a micro scale, um, uh, I'm, I'm a big believer in a shelter with deep bedding is actually better than a moonscape dirt yard. For example, in a, in a homestead situation where maybe you're bringing them some garden weeds and you're you know, you're 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 just going out, and I mean, I mean, if yeah. you if you go yeah. out, if you go out here with a, you know, with a with a just any kind of thing, and you, you know, you spend a few minutes. Yeah, and this could be your garden. Absolutely, absolutely, it could be your garden. You put that in there, you know, and um, and and, and it, it it attracts those pigs. Yeah, and they, you know, when people say, oh, pigs don't eat grass, oh, they eat, they eat a lot of forage. They're, they're, they love it. They're drawn and to they're it. they're eating that even though they have all they can eat grain. Yes, yes, because pigs don't watch TV. <laughs> so, so, so that's, that's the trick. Don't put a TV out. Yeah, don't put a TV out there. No flat screen here. Um, but, but, yeah, the whole, the, 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 pig, the pigs know what they need, you know, and so they have a, they have a, a, a plenty of instinctual, you know, desire to, Eat stuff. While at Joel's, I definitely had to ask about this system, the pig port, because he's part of the original inspiration of raising pigs in small spaces with deep bedding. He does that with his pigs during the winter. He raises his piglets that way. So what does he actually think about this as a full-time, whole-time, somebody, just family of four, six, not much space, something in the backyard. Here's what he thought. What's yeah, your yeah. initial thoughts on that? For somebody, just a family of four yeah. in suburbia? I, th I, think it's, I, th I think it's great. And uh, the, the, the key is you got to feed it carbon. Okay. I mean, th that, yeah. that's, what, that's what, again, if, if um, uh, you know, what keeps the, what keeps the odors uh, uh, correct and mm -hmm. keeps the pigs healthy 
is you got to keep feeding the feeding carbon to the system and, and let it and get deep. Don't don't warm. worry don't worry about don't worry about it getting two or three feet deep. You know that's okay. not a, that's not a problem. Is a ten by is a twelve by ten area enough for two pigs to grow up to? Work? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, twelve by ten, 120 square feet. Um, yeah. It, it, yeah, that's enough room. Because some one uh, again, remember if they have a good composting bedding, yeah, um, they have a lot to do. I mean, you yeah. look at these little pigs here; they're over here, they're digging. I mean, there's uh, the, uh, part of the deep bedding aspect is that they have a lot to do, mm -hmm. and and pigs are easily bored. You know, that's why yeah, you, know, you can put a throw a ball in there, a couple branches that they can you know shove around, um, any of that kind of stuff to to give them something to do and bleed off energy. While visiting Joel, he gave me some insight on the forest system, turning forest into pasture, on, particularly on how to get the till just right, to get grass to come up and not weeds, not bramble. So let's say you want to turn this into a silvo pasture yeah. or a, yeah. you, want, you want to graze cows in here. When yeah, yeah, you yeah. Want pasture in here, yeah, but right. you want to use the pigs. Right. How would you maybe do it different? I'd, I'd leave them longer okay. and, 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 make them, and make the impact harder. Okay. Mm -hmm. So either leave them longer or make the paddocks smaller. Make the paddocks smaller. Either way. Yeah, either way. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or more pigs. The, the point is, you need more disturbance. Yeah. That's you need a little more disturbance. So, is this ideal disturbance for then going behind and encouraging pasture? This right here. Yes. Yes. Uh huh. Absolutely. Okay. So they're mm -hmm. in a paddock here. It's going to be just to review. No longer than twelve days. Mm hmm. Are you aiming for twelve days? Or do you give and take? It's going to be 10? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, anywhere anywhere from 5 to 12. If you don't disturb it enough, it tends toward brambles. If you disturb it too much, it tends toward weeds. Okay. So there's a sweet spot of, of what you're trying to do uh, to create the vegetation that you're looking for. You guys got to see this. It's almost, as Joel would say, almost a moonscape. A lot of rocks, no grass some disturbance this is where they've been this is where they're going but they've been here before they've done this to that before this is why this looks like it does <laughs> hey are you doing a good job this is one of the most beautiful pastures i've ever seen look at that good job guys we got back from joel's and we began to apply what we learned the very next day. This morning for the pig, see that Ben? Mm -hmm. You know, that got, we had talked about that. It got moldy because yeah. it was sitting up against the water and that's when our drain was leaking and we got all this water on the, on the wood. Wall. But this is good. I learned at Joel Salatin's that in the deep bedding system to, to encourage it to get warm, to combat the, all the wood chips, every fourth time they put spent hay in there. No kidding. So that's and the, perfect. The pigs eat some of that, and this this breaks down better than wood chips, and so it it'll inoc it'll get this pile going a little bit Turn better. Turn into a yeah. giant compost yeah. pile. Yeah. Good morning, gentlemen. How are you guys? Look at you, just getting petted and rubbed, and not afraid at all. But I learned at Joel's. It's another thing. I don't want to keep. You don't want to keep a pig in the same area more than 12 days let me feed these guys okay i'm sorry i'm sorry i'll feed you you guys are fine you guys are fine here here you go what i was saying is there we can't keep you're not supposed to keep a pig in an area longer than 12 days without doing deep bedding so i would have to fill this area up with a foot of mulch it's not impossible and I may still do that um, if I'm going to keep them in there or give this 80 days rest, 80 days rest. That's a lot of little paddocks to set up around this area. And I'm trying to achieve a 240 square foot farm for you guys with not much space. Joel thought this 10 by 12 area is just plenty enough for these guys. So we keep them more. We feed them twice a day. One reason is just to keep them something to do. Joel suggested a ball or a limb. We got some limbs or something we can put in here for them to push around. Oh, you know it might be good? Hey, listen, I know it would be good. I'm gonna get it next. Some of those, if there's any branches in the burn pile, they would get charcoal off of that. I, I kind of miss just being able to 
walk right up and do this. Should I give you guys another one? Should I give you another thing I learned? These wood chips, they need to... Joel said, you could cover them up with a tarp, but it is labor intensive and it does keep moisture in at the top and I've noticed that. So it's better to keep wood chips under a shelter. So I'm thinking, we're getting rid of this and we're gonna actually store wood chips. Jonah found us plenty of branches to take down to them to be occupied. What I'm wondering though, oh boy. is if we can't have a little double bonus. These, this is, these branches have been charred. There's some charcoal in there, buddy. I think this will keep them. Put kelp in there. We're gonna put the charcoal in there. We're gonna see what they eat. And, and we got salt out there. We're back. And you guys are fat. <laughs> I like it when they they get so full they can't even sit up to eat. Just check that burnt board in there. They got they get minerals. Potted. Composting, bro. Yep. So that's why this is amazing and yep. safe. Because look, look where they're pooping. It's going to be 100 degrees, yep. dude. Well, and so that's lot, eating the that's pathogens and yeah. breaking that manure down. And that's yes. Warm to the touch out here. It's working. They're gnawing on the branch. <laughs> I'm telling you, Joel is just a genius. Throw a branch in there. They'll nudge it around. They're nudging it around. They're going to get some of that charcoal. Look, they're eating that hay. <laughs> you happy? You're so happy. This is a ridiculously fun system. I never knew how much fun I thought I would have with the system. I thought it would just be an extra chore. But this is fun. We get to interact with the pigs every day. Hmm? Hmm? We get to throw you our garden. Our garden waste. Good girl. Good girl. They're gonna be the happy campers, honey. Hey, is this a fresh manure right here, Ben? Uh, yes. That's like this morning? No, that was yesterday. I wonder if that's fresh enough. For... Pigs. Pigs will eat poop if it's fresh. Ew. <laughs> I bet that's what everybody else is saying in the comments. No. Uh, it's like... 30% undigested. It's got amino acids in it that they create with their amazing digestive system that pigs don't. And it's good for them. Huh. Special little treat there for you. Oh! Let's see what happens. Let's see if it's nudged by tomorrow. Fresh poop, Ben. Oh, yay. Fresh poop. Get the pigs over here. Come on. Thank you, Flossie, for our experiment. It's not going to get any fresher than this. 24 hour poop versus a two minute poop. Pull right here again. <laughs> oh, shoot. He was right. They'll eat it fresh. Holy smokes. Holy smokes. Are you like a kid in a candy store? <laughs> oh my gosh. Are you serious? As for the other stuff, looks like maybe they've... Did you eat it too? You won't eat all of it. Whoa, you ate your charcoal. Holy smokes. And you ate all your salt. Wow, I didn't, I'm not scripting this, guys. <laughs> this is just an hour and a half-ish later. Look, they ate that too, 24 hour old. You ate what you're gonna get, I think. Look, they're eating it now. So that's the 24 hour old poop. That's the two minute old poop. All right, you don't know how unbelievably I am encouraged by this. We've just 10X'd our, our situation in there. Adding the green material, giving them cow manure, uh, giving them charcoal that they've already eaten. Man. Does it smell? Not at all. That's what I was just <laughs> thinking. I'm like, there was nobody would even know in the neighborhood that nope. you have pigs. Do you see a crazy amount of flies? No, I don't see any flies. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Thank you, our bolted Swiss chard. Half of their ration right now. They're not too crazy about vegetables. They'll eat them, but you know what they're crazy about? Curds. 
and probably not too crazy about apple cider vinegar, but it's a little bit of maintenance, health maintenance. The one thing the pigs aren't gonna do for us is, sure, they'll clear the way, they'll open it up for us, but we still have to saw down trees that we don't want. And that became a big part of our chores throughout that season. <laughs> I'm coming for you. This pasture forest, we've used the pigs to help us underbrush. Now, we're gonna come in and get this brush, get these trees, get these stumps up and pile in the brush pile. This is gonna be mowed today. That's the goal anyway. But first, chores. How are y'all? <laughs> Ooh, Josiah, I love that one. Okay, they've uh, they've left some cow manure. No problem. We got some wood shavings right here. I don't want to. I want to cut. I don't. It's gonna attract the flies. So let's keep it covered. Now the mix of this carbon and nitrogen will help this pile start breaking down a little bit better. Got the brush clear. Really, I kind of wish I would have just, why? Why did I take the pile up there? I should have just put the pile right here. So from here on, Jonah, let's put our hat. We're just gonna try to get this section. We have 30 minutes. That'll be half of it. Maybe we'll get the other half this afternoon or tomorrow. I think we can get this half. We just gotta come in and get these stumps up in every branch that we missed that the mower can't get. John, what do you think? Wow. Pasture? Now that's pasture. There's no forested pasture here. There was no savable trees. But look, this is like six cow days a year, probably right here. And I don't see why the cows won't be in here next time. Yeah, yeah I won't be surprised if they are. Grass will start coming up instead of this forest. This is what I'm excited about. Hope we hit it tomorrow. I was hoping to hit it today. Maybe tomorrow. These pigs were in here. We use them to strategically Underbrush, whoa, Till, look. New grass is already coming up. <laughs> look at all this grass, look at all this grass. Grass that was not there before. This was a forest. Now, we've kept beneficials like locusts. There's a pine there for shade. We are turning this into, we are pasturing our forests. In doing that, we create shade, yet grass still grows, ends up being a much better habitat for pretty much any animal. Place it in here. So they'll underbrush this. See that wild bush? That wild bushy area? Yeah. That's what this used to look like too. But now, after they're out of here, we can get in here and cut these less desirable. So this. This is what this looked like. We're gonna clear it up even more. Blade trimmer. Okay, you think that'll do good on some of these? Yeah. Okay, let's, let's get it done. First, let's pull out the brush that's already cut. Very soon. We're gonna be walking through our very first forested pasture, pastured forest.
Oh my word, it's like I'm in a sauna, literally. I am soaking wet. Do you see it on my eyebrows? Holy smokes. We went past our time, but we got to. We got to. We got to just mow this. So, this is your before. And now, a forested pasture. Look, Josiah. You're half in the sun, half in the shade. How's it feel? Good. This is nice. This is so nice right in here. So much cooler than just right here. Does that not look nice? Yeah. What? It looks so good. From this to this. Partnering with pigs to make this a better place for all the animals to come through in the future. Cows gonna like it. Oh, cows will love it. Look at this. Look at this cow, fat and happy. Do you realize where she is, guys? Do you realize she, where she is? This is where we first put the pigs. This was week two-ish, week three-ish. That was week one, and they came there, and now, here she is. You gotta say thanks to those pigs. They brought up this, this grass you're eating right now. It wasn't here. It was not here. <laughs> it wasn't here. And now, look how fat you are right now. You're a fat cow. Look, this is perfect disturbance, fellas. Guaranteed grass is going to grow right there. Good job, guys. A little apple cider vinegar, health maintenance. So, it rained last night. The question is, did our wood chips under the shed stay dry? Well, we still have a leak. We still have a leak. We tried to lower this carport so rain would run off better it's cocked it's still leaking why why okay it used to leak there and it's only on the side it's only on the side here which the gutter will help it's good to get you a taste now you'll follow me anywhere i want to go <laughs> so easy all right jonah can you come hold the camera for a second how about let's start up in the corner and work our way that way. My little foresters. Where they were, where they're gonna be. Now, grass. There's actually a seed bank of grass in the soil that they're gonna encourage to come up. But look at what they did for us, Jonah. That's incredible. We can actually get in there now and get at these trees. Good job, piggies. Yeah, they left them in here for longer. This, this is what they were done to the whole thing. Okay. But it's yeah. good that we moved them out. It's true. We should have made this about half the size. Yeah. This is where the pigs were just last. This is what we're clearing today. Okay. We, we gave them too much space. If you want to see how fast it can happen. These pigs were in here, what, Jonah? Three, four days ago? You see that new grass? Yeah. Okay. Uh, there you go. Let's do this. So I'll do some cutting over here, let you pull some out, and then I'll go cut over there. We'll get some switch back and forth to keep everybody safe. How much do we get done, Daniel? Whoa! We cleared a lot of that, buddy. Yeah. Chainsaw got hung up. Chain got too loose. Okay, what do we like, guys? Can we get the rest in 15 minutes, Daniel? I think so. We got a tough mutter here. I think we can do it. The pigs did a lot of work, we did a lot of work, but we also made time to have a little fun with them, especially these guys in the pig port who could benefit from a little bit of an exercise. 
You want to see if the pigs want to go on a walk, Becky? Yeah, let's see. <laughs> if they're crazy hungry, I'm going to take them on a walk. Right by, by, by out there. See if they want some grass on stem. Yeah. Yeah, your heart is the sun and it shine. Is it open? Well, your heart is the sun and it shine. Says it open. Yeah, your heart is the sun and it shine. Is it open? Well, your heart is the sun and it shine. Says it open. Yeah, your bones are the earth. In this scene, we should take a little bit of exercise. Saw the earth, and they sing with a mountain. Hail on, how the earth, and they sing with a mountain. Put your bones on the earth, and they sing with a mountain. Why would you look outside yourself when you? All of the world inside Why would you look outside yourself when you live All of the world you inside say, Why would you look outside yourself when you have All of the world inside Why would you look outside yourself when you live All of the world yeah, inside Mom, he's, he's saying it now That creates your horizon Well, your mind is a space Creates your horizon. Your mind is a space that creates your horizon. Your mind is a space that creates your horizon. Say, why would you look outside yourself when you have all of the world inside? Why would you look outside yourself? One thing I should note is we didn't just use the pigs. We figured out that we could use cows to help us clear forests. First, the cows. They're bigger. They also uh, graze. Well, it wouldn't be graze. It would be uh, browse. They would also browse some of the bigger stuff, knock stuff down, clear it a little bit for the pigs. Then we'd bring the pigs in. Then we humans would come in. It was a beautiful combination. Today, we're moving the cows out of where they've been, and we're moving the pigs in where those cows have been. How'd you guys do? Huh? You did fabulous. Wow. Let's get the cows in here. They'll eat this, uh, they'll eat this poplar, for sure. Poison ivy and poplar. Maybe they'll knock down some of these sticks for us. Why are we doing that? Well, ultimately, we're turning our forests into pastures and eventually our pastures into forests to make it more productive to where we get more food from the exact same amount of land. So let's get this unelectrified. Let's clear. We need to run a pig fence, let's say, down to here. Hit it about the right size. So let's mimic that. Let's kind of look for a break, an opening. Oh. Right through here. See this, Jonah? Right through here, okay? You guys are just following me around. What do you want? Oh, brush trimmer, Jonah. That might be more peaceful. Get me my scythe. I actually wish they'd leave us alone. They keep following us around. I could string trim it, but some of those things, most of those things are good for a string trimmer. I could cut through it, but some, some things are thicker. I'm thinking the scythe brush blade would do better. Give me some space. Give me some space, guys. Get the water over. Get I it going. Remember, 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 we shouldn't move them because they're in a mud wallow. 
Uh, you're supposed to do your water last, aren't you? Yeah. Well, I think because it's so hilly, the water will run right off. Okay. Johnny, you're going to grab the hose? Yeah. You grab the hose, Josiah. Will you grab the lid for it? I'm going to do Josiah's suggestion and get these cows in the lane out of our way. No hurting. They're going. They're saying, see you later. Get the grain out of the way, guys. Come on. Let's go. Get out of our way. All right, and that's good. They're in the lane. I'm going to go all the way back. You think? Get out. Yeah. Stop. Okay, they stopped. Good. Let's hurry. Let's hurry and maybe we'll beat them back. You guys ready for a move? This is the pig's job. So this is where they were before. This is where they were this week. You guys did a great job. You guys did a great job. Manured, tilled. We gotta come in behind them. We're kinda getting behind on clearing up behind them. We still got that brush to get up. Jonah, they're heading out, buddy. There you go. But look at this where they were. Absolutely amazing. This is a perfect till job right here. Perfect. The cows then have cleared for you guys and you're gonna be even more efficient. Pigs will eat this carcass raw, but I have found that they do a little bit better job, eat more of it, hence like it more if you cook it. How are you? How are you guys? You ready to be moved? Hmm? Hmm? How have you guys been? Hmm? I missed you. Hmm? You didn't miss me too bad, I see. It is a romantic idea to have your animals do the work of the farm, but it's not easy. It's not easy. Extremely satisfying and exciting. It's not easy. See the vision though, right? After animals. After humans, look how beautiful. Grass coming in, trees. A little surprise for you guys. Somewhat of a snack, but definitely a wallow. Oh, oh yeah. You loving it. Good little wallow for you. Whoa, don't shake that on me. You getting used some too now, huh? Oh yeah, woo, poop bath. Everybody say poop bath. Jonah went to get some whoppers. He forgot to leave the plumbing stuff behind, so I'm kind of at a standstill. I was looking for him, and look. You're not where you're supposed to be, buddy. I think that just happened, because he came walking right by here. Jonah's got the feed, too, so it's hopeless getting him back in. I'm not too worried about it, since there's two still in. Maybe he got out right there. Is the fence on? It's on. Is it hitting? Hitting hard. You coming back? Come on back. Pig is wandering way down to that pine tree. I feel so hopeless, helpless. I feel helpless because I don't have a pig board. I don't have any feed. Here he comes. Just stay calm, as Cliff Davis would say. Pigs get out, just stay calm. And would you look at that, he's coming back. We're getting it. We probably shouldn't have been up here so long without feeding it. Probably got excited. All right, Jonah's back. We got the feed. Come on, come on. Just hopefully he'll, Jonah's kind of bringing up the rear. Let's turn off the fence over here, Jonah. And then we'll feed the other two. And then we'll lift up the fence for him, okay? Feed these guys. And then we'll lift our... This is probably it, right here. Maybe knock these branches onto the fence. It's 
been so fun working with these guys as we come near to the end. This has been an absolutely amazing setup. Being that I have acreage, it would have made sense to put just put these guys with the forest, help, help the guys clear the forest, but I want to show everyone that even if you have a small space, you could raise pigs. 10 by 12 area, manuring in here, covered up every day with wood chips. Such a great situation then. Still, certainly better than store-bought. Well, if you want to do organic, it's almost impossible to find. So this has been a great system. And in your situation, you could get rid of your vegetable, so they partner, you could get rid of your vegetable waste, if a chicken dies or something like that, this is a great garbage disposal or nature's greatest miracle, trash into bacon and sausage. Pigs for everyone. Pigs for everyone, can we say that? Pigs for everyone. This has been a great demonstration this year and I hope you enjoyed watching the process. So overall, we had a wonderful experience in these two years raising pigs. And now I should talk about the more difficult part. I mean, it's exciting because it's harvest time, but it's also difficult because we have a few pigs and they are alive and, and we've somewhat become attached to them. And guess what, guys? This was going to be the very first time I'm actually the one pulling the trigger on this size of an animal. So I was totally nervous, but I made sure I got lots and lots of practice. I've never shot a pig, and I'm gonna have to in about two weeks, so I thought, I need, I know how to do it. It's in my head. So today I thought I would go out and just practice. I'm not gonna pull the trigger. I'm, it's not, the gun's not loaded. Um, it's on safety. I'm just gonna go and act like I'm about to do this and see what it's like. <laughs> Someone from our fan base actually reached out to us. They're a NRA certified gun safety instructor. He reached out and offered us gun training lessons. Ourselves and the hauler. So two families gonna get gun safety lessons and I didn't think that could hurt. So isolate them out into to the, uh, the area in which you want them. Then I'm going to look at the actual individual animal, such as the back, this larger pig in the back. If you look at his eye set versus the other two, these other two have a narrower eye set. So I'm going to shoot him a little differently than I would these two here. I'm going to find that cross point, you know, at the eyes. I want that angle to go down and try to intersect from that, that point in the brain okay. to the bottom of almost the juggle or the yeah. trachea is where I'm aiming in an imaginary line of going through. Like if I was going to shoot this, Do it. this let's pig try right run. Here, let's try run. If I was going to, no, if I was going to shoot this pig, I would. Come here. So I'm gonna walk over while he's here and he's done. I'm gonna come in right above the eyes. Bam. Okay. Wait, you just did it? I just did it, bam. Okay, do it again. All right, so we're here, I'm ready. So this kind of movement. This gun is unloaded, it's safe gun. This is just mocking. That's where I would and be at that angle down. That's a pretty sharp angle down. Yeah. When I'm at that angle down, I'm gonna shoot right in this area. Okay. At about this angle, if you look at the gun. I'm not shooting like this. I'm shooting at an angle. But with the way that they are. That's steeper than 45. Yeah. I'm going to come in. Do it again on him. Okay. Boom. You could go to a kneeling position. Where you're, Is this on? No. Okay. So you could go into a kneeling position to get a little better. I like that. Boom. That first one seems so steep, like almost well, up towards the Well, that was jaw. trying to come over if you were over here. Okay. If I have him out here where he's there, I like you him. know I can't. Now you don't want to, you don't want to come in here and be shooting this way. I see I'm going into the, the pit. Then you're cabin, going to the neck. But I'm wanting to come in and aim for that point right there. Do you see how I was like on this pig here? Yeah, do it again. Like see, I'm aiming for that point there. Okay. All right, you Position. tell me if I would have killed this pig or knocked him out. Oh. <laughs> Just remember, you got all the time in the world. Boom, done, dead pig. Because the problem is, 
Well, if you miss with a bullet and you don't knock them out or kill them really good, they, they're going to run around and squeal. They're going to get stressed out. It's inhumane. It can ruin the meat. All the stresses, the amino acids going through, it's just not good. So I had to make sure I got it right. No, that's good. Then we can see if I hit him between the eyes. I'm going to get as close as I can. I'm going to practice kneeling down. Hey. All right. Okay, so there's one. I was a little to the left, and this guy wasn't moving. A little to the right. So, would I would I've knocked him out? There's no chance. <laughs> <laughs> He's okay. done. That's what counts. Here, hand me, hand me them. Okay. So that first season, when I successfully shot all five with no incident, the second season, when I successfully nailed all five pigs, I don't know if it matters how many I've done, each and every time, it's exciting and satisfying that that was that pig's worst day of their life. They had a wonderful life, wonderful, but they'll never remember that day. They'll never even know it happened. That's completely satisfying, and it's important that I do it. It may sound strange. You know, you're attached to them. I don't want anybody else doing that. We had workshops, we had volunteers and friends, we had staff come in to help. Nobody else was gonna dispatch those pigs. I felt like that responsibility of taking a life, if I'm going to eat meat, I need to feel the weight of what just happened. Okay, it's a race to straight while he's still warm. I think that was our best scald yet. What do you think, man? Yeah, that was a good one. They're a little easier to get off. What do you think about that, Ben? This, this Which part? The scrape, that was an excellent scrape. Did it in 15 minutes. We got to a rhythm where we put Ben on eviscerating and we went and harvested the pigs. And it was for Ben's first time eviscerating. And he did great. <laughs> Next thing we know, you're gonna be shooting the pigs. Are you guys saying goodbye? We are, we're thanking him. This is the last one. We do thank you, buddy. Open the door. Open it. Last one. Go, Jonah, go for it. We're back up here with this pig. We're going to scald him. Ben's eviscerating. And. It was a long day. We've done this whole process, this last one, as a family. It's family affair. It's 6.30. We scraped the last one. It wasn't as smooth as that one before last. If that went as smooth as that other one, Ben, it would be like... This we'll makes be done. it so much better. So this one was like, we could scrape the skin part off, but the hair stayed. It was weird. It was weird. So he's burning it. Now we can scrape. And then with the last one, Ben said, do you want to do it? And I said, sure. <laughs> I'm not sure what it's like. Yeah. Uh, it'd be faster if Ben did it because he's already got one on his belt. I've seen it. 
but I've never done it myself, but I thought, I gotta learn how to do this. And you never really learn until you actually do it. I've seen it plenty of times. Well, Jonas, you and I on this one. Now listen, I've, I've done a sheep. I've seen a pig done before, but I've never done it myself. It's easy. Thankfully, you know, it was like the Boy Scouts. You know, once once a Boy Scout learns how to set up a tent, once somebody tells him, he's got to teach the other one how to do it. That's what Ben was for me. And it felt great because if Ben wasn't there, I'd be cutting into the urinal track. I would have not remembered how difficult it was to get the um, intestines out of the track. And that would have probably took me twice as long as it did without Ben. So thank you, Ben. Our last one right here. 7.45. I'll help you guys. Can you hold this? Wow! So we finished just at dark. And Ben decided to stay even further on and help us clean up after dark. Just going way beyond what we ever imagined. And it just felt great. It felt great. Art came and helped. Then Ben, it just, it, we couldn't have done it without them. And it was amazing to work hard, feel like we weren't gonna get it done, and then get it done at a somewhat reasonable time. I did get to bed like by 10.30, y'all. That's not too bad. But we did start at like 5.30, so it was a huge day. But felt great to have it done. Feels so good to have them in our cooler and ready to go to the butcher. Look inside this cool room. I think it's paying off right now, Rebecca. Huh? We got a pig in each barrel. Bears on the ground in plastic bags. Yeah. This cool room's paying off right now. No, no, it's made today the, possible. The butcher would be closed. Yeah, I know. He'd be closed. Now, before I end this, I will say, in comparing the meat of the traditional guinea hogs, really fatty, to the tr other uh, more fast growing, leaner hogs, you gotta be careful with the fat on those, on those pork chops. We found out the hard way. <laughs> oh my. Oh. Oh gosh. Woo! Justin. I'm gonna put it out. Shoot! Oh shit. Pull the girl away. It's gonna burn the house down. <laughs> oh gosh, did, it, did you turn it off? Yes. Yeah. yeah, you can't. You're gonna burn. Oh my gosh. It's off. Yes, we had a grill fire. So since then, we've learned that you need to cut the pork chops, cut the extra fat off, cut it into chunks, cook it with eggs or something. It's delicious. So now comes the fun part, the eating. Yes, it feels so good to raise an animal on your own land. Put that animal to work throughout its life, doing what it wants to do. Pigs, as Joel would say, they don't have TV. <laughs> they want to do what a pig wants to do. They want to go around and, and till and walk around and putz around and get stuff done from dawn till dusk. And we did that and now we've eaten it. We have food in our freezers for a year. And I get to feed myself and my family wonderful, amazing food. Pigs, pigs, they're amazing. And now hope you see that there's different systems. Pigs don't have to smell. Pigs don't have to tear up the place. Or if they do, you can put, them to, you can put that to work in helping you establish a pasture in a forest or helping you establish gardens or giving it enough rest and it just comes back. How it was even better because it's been fertilized so pigs for everyone can you guys say it with me pigs for everyone and oh and what if you have a small space how about the pig port guys 240 square feet they're living in one half your wood chips are living in the other now if you guys are inspired and excited to do this yourself hopefully you learned something in this movie um, hopefully you've laughed hopefully you have been inspired hopefully that's the takeaway that you would be inspired to grow pigs yourself. Just start with two pigs. Uh, start with getting feeders, buying pigs that are two months old. The Livestock Conservancy is a great source uh, for pigs. 
just get going. Premier One makes amazing fences for this. Premier One also makes feed pans for uh, your water. I mean, you can get the water, the 55 gallon water barrel or just pans. Guys, we started off with water in pans and feed in pans. It's so easy. Now, I'm gonna help you if you wanna take this further. I'm gonna help you. This is the documentary, what you saw. I've got a course which is more straight to the point. How to, you know, 10 things pigs can do for you. Uh, how to get started with pigs. Just like a 12 minute, 15 minute crash course telling you exactly how to get started. And we go through the gamut of our experience. It's an entire course, many different levels. I encourage you to check that out. I'll leave info for that down below. Goodbye. Love you guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for everyone. I hope you enjoyed that film. Thank you. You're still here. That means you're serious. That means you want pigs for everyone. <laughs> if you want to learn, if you want to get more info and find out how to actually do these processes step by step, please check again, check out abundanceplus.com. We just dropped our permaculture pigs course so that you too can raise piglets from hatching to the plate.